Welcome to my dining room. Uh, no landscape photography today, um, and I'm not even out of the house. So I, you know, I've talked about being local. Couldn't get much local, uh, more local than this. I'm, I'm literally sat at the dining room table. But what type of photography can I do with two bits of plastic? One piece of perspex, I guess, and, and one translucent. Is that the right word? Piece of plastic and a um, ice cream tub full of batteries and bits and bobs. Well, I'm going to do some really high key wildflower photography um, on the principle of a project called uh, Meet Your Neighbours, NYN, which was founded by two guys, Neil Benvey, who's a British guy and Clay Bolt, um, maybe about 10 years ago. But the principle is to take photographs of any aspect of, of nature against a very bright white background. So you just focus in exclusively on the subject. Um, it is a little bit technical. It's probably the most technical um, video I've done so far. It'll take a little bit of setting up, but the nice thing about it um, is I can demonstrate it to you uh, on our dining table. So I'll get things set up, I'll show you the setup, and then uh, we'll start uh, some uh, uh, photography. So I said it was a little bit technical, um, and here's the first aspect. So I've got my camera set up here. Apologies, <laughs> it's my wife's birthday at the weekend, so um, a couple of cards out. Um, camera set up with a macro lens on. I'll talk about that in greater detail in a minute. But this is the first element. So um, I have to have a completely white background for um, uh, the subject to stand in front of. So this is just a piece of, you know, it's a maybe a millimeter thick perspex, pure white. And then behind that, I have a flash set up with a, um, a controller that's attached to the camera. So when I fire the shutter in the camera, it fires um, the flash behind here. Now, <laughs> the distance of the flash from um, the piece of perspex is quite important. So uh, I'll just show you, uh, I've not got anything up, so I'm just taking a test shot, but you probably saw the flash go off there. Now, when I look at the image in the preview screen, you can see it's flashing, which and that means the whole of that um, a piece of perspex is overexposed, which is perfect, which is exactly what I want. So now I need to look at uh, establishing a subject and then providing some light uh, in the foreground of the subject. So hopefully explained um, kind of the rear setup um, flash. So I should say, I never ever use flash other for this type of photography. I don't use it in wildlife photography. Obviously don't use it in landscape photography. Um, I never use flashes. So the only time I use flash. So got these off eBay, um, not even sure what they're called. Let's have a look. Um, TT520 speed light. They're not Canon. Um, they were cheap. Niwa, Niwa. You only need cheap flashes for this. So, uh, it's the only time I ever use them. So I've got my flash set up here with my um, piece of perspex, which provides the white background. I then have my subject, in this case, uh, an aquilegia flower. Now, have to explain, I'm shooting at home to show the setup. The aquilegia flower came from the garden. It's not a wild flower, it's a flower we planted. So any other subjects I use today will be flowers we planted. Um, this setup is transferable into the field. I would never, ever, ever pick or cut wild flowers. Just, I wouldn't do it. So for the purpose of this explanation, so without, so that you're left with no doubt, the, this isn't a wild flower, and none of the flowers I'll be using are wild flowers. I, I do not agree with taking wild flowers from the environment. That's why you can take this setup out uh, into the field. So anyway, there's a subject, nice kind of purple aquilegia flower. And then in the foreground, I have another flash, uh, again, uh, with a slave unit attached to the camera. And in this case, there's this, um, it's actually, uh, uh, it, it's envelope stiffener. So it's the sort of stuff that you would pack in a big envelope with a print to stop it from bending. So that perspex is about a millimetre or so thick and, and it, you know, it's, it's bored. This is incredibly light. Uh, you, cannot, you, you might even, I don't know if you can see my hand through it. 
uh, and it's just to provide uh, the fusion of the, the, of the flash. So I've got my flash set up here, got my flash set up there, and what will happen when I press the shutter release, light illuminates this piece and makes that completely white, and then I provide some foreground flash to light up the subject. So there's the subject. Um, nice aquilegia flower. I'll just put you on. So I'm just going to make sure that you get the flower looking its best. So I'm going to turn it a little bit. And then I'm going to take an image. Um, and I've got my camera set up here. Um, my camera won't fire in... Um, uh, my flash won't fire, so you, you won't be able to see anything uh, because it's so underexposed. Um, but I'll go. Uh, my flash won't fire when, when I'm using uh, Live View. So set up the image in Live View. So sorry, just get that in the middle. That's, that's nice. I know it's focused because I've pre focused. Um, so I'm going back to. Um, so I'm on f5.6 uh, just to get a bit of depth uh, to the flower and then um, go the other way sorry uh, for the purposes of this because of the uh, shutter speed and the uh, flashes 1 60th of a second I'll have to turn live view off to take the image but you'll see this now I'm going to take the image you'll see the flashes fly it hopefully you saw that go back to the image now hopefully you can see the flower is um, uh, illuminated quite nicely, but the background is flashing, and that means that's exactly what I want. I want the background to be overexposed uh, and the focus to be on this flower in the foreground. It, now I might need to just move the flower forward a little bit. Um, uh, and there is a bit of, uh, in this process, there's a there's a, there's a little element of um, uh, kind of trial and error, moving the, um, the, the subject f further away from the background uh, by, you know, maybe a, a centimetre, not too much. Uh, but I'm going to move that, try a couple of other shots, and then I'll get a different, uh, different flower to, to show you the process. I've chosen another uh, subject uh, or another victim. I've uh, just chopped it out of the garden. Um, so I wanted to show you how you can get uh, kind of engaged with really delicate subjects. So I've chosen a forget-me-not, and I'll just, hopefully this picks up on the GoPro, the GoPro, put my hand behind the flower. Hopefully you can see how small and delicate those um, forget-me-not flowers are. So I'll just take you to the camera and show you what I'm doing. Uh, one of the nice things is I can sit down while I'm doing this, so I'll show you on live view. Um, one of the things I like about this photography, this style of photography, is you can essentially put anything in front of the um, uh, kind of the screen uh, in the back, and uh, just experiment away. So I've, I've um, out in the field, I've done thistles and berries and twigs and all sorts of things, and it might look a bit kind of cumbersome, but actually the two bits of um, plastic don't weigh anything. Um, the uh, Flashes don't really weigh that much. Um, and having the uh, Wimberley plants is, is fantastic, particularly to just hold things steady. It, I must say um, it's a bit of a challenge uh, in windy weather. But anyway, um, so I've, I'm focused on the top of that uh, kind of cluster of flowers on the forget-me-not. And for my setup, I find that uh, having a shutter speed of uh, 1 25th of a second and I'm on um, uh, aperture of f8. Let's just have a look. Hopefully you saw the flash go off then. Uh, and there you can see, well, I'll um, zoom in a little bit. So you can see the, the, the kind of nice delicate blues are pick, picked up, the, the, as was originally intended. Um, the flower is the only thing in the image. Uh, that's flashing, obviously, because it's, it's well overexposed. Uh, and, and that's what I want. One thing you might find um, you need to do is alter the power of the flash at the front, depending on the brightness of the flower. So if that was a white flower, you might need to drop the power of the flash down a little or move the flash uh, away um, a little. So I'm going to get some more victims. Um, 
probably, I'm just looking at a bunch of flowers that my wife got for her birthday. Yeah, pro probably not. Um, but I'll go out, I'll go and hunt around the garden, look for other things to, uh, to shoot and um, kind of show you another um, process. Maybe a final piece. Um, just to show you that it doesn't all have to be about um, flowers. So what I've selected, um, it, there's a bush growing in our garden. I'm not sure what it is because the flowers aren't out, but there's a bit of bind, bind weed, weed um, the kind of the, the gardener's perennial kind of hate, just twisting its way around the stem. I don't know how well you can see that on the GoPro, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll take some images and I'll, I'll, I'll put them in. But I just wanted to show you um, that's not all about flowers. Uh, I've uh, photographed um, frogs, newts, um, beetles, uh, and I'll put a link in, in the description below, I'll put a link in um, to the Meet Your Neighbours homepage and you'll be absolutely amazed by some of the work um, that people are doing, all sorts of, you know, snakes, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. But it's a fairly, just to recap, it's a fairly simple process. You do, you need two flashes. Uh, as I said, I got mine um, cheap from eBay. Uh, 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 something to provide um, the back uh, lighting. Uh, I, I'm using a piece of Perspex, but you could use maybe a softbox or something. Something to, to diffuse at the front, a bit of envelope stiffener or a, a diffuser, and that's basically it. Um, you then got a bit of fiddling around uh, with the camera to get your settings right. Um, but it's a bit of trial, trial, uh, trial and error. Uh, a rough rule of thumb for me is kind of F8 and 125, 1 25th of a second seems to work well. But occasionally you've got to push it just a little bit. If you, if you push it too far, uh, the subject gets uh, overexposed uh, as well. If you drop it down, uh, the background becomes a bit too grey. Um, so uh, kind of rule of thumb for me is, is about there with my lens and my camera setup. But you need to, um, if you're going to try this, do a bit of experimentation. The good thing is, though, once you've found kind of the sweet spot, you can kind of store it in your memory to, so you know each time you come to it. Uh, and then go out and, and try it. You know, I, I'm doing it on the dining table um, just to demonstrate, but I do take this out into the field. Um, so go out and try it, try different things. Um, I've been set a bit of a, a challenge to try and get some birds um, against this backdrop, but still trying to th work out a process for the lighting because it's obviously much more difficult to get a bird to perch for you right in front of one of these. So, but that's, that's a challenge for another day. Well, I'm done. Um, probably <laughs> cut enough flowers out of the garden um, uh, and can get away with it um, without getting shouted at. Uh, what I thought I would just do a quick recap on the equipment I've used because I think when it's all set up, it looks a bit more daunting um, than it actually is. But uh, I'll, do, I'll do a quick recap. So, um, piece of perspex. Piece of envelope stiffener, uh, translucent. Uh, a system for triggering your flashes. Um, so obviously you've got two flashes, you need two triggers. So they sit underneath your flashes. That sits on top of your camera. Um, again, you can spend an absolute fortune on these. Um, or you do what I did and eBay them. And I think they cost less than 20 quid for the, the set and the yeah, they work, so why complain? Um, two flashes, as I, as I mentioned I, I, um, earlier, I never, ever, ever use um, flash other than doing uh, this type of photography. So again, um, eBay, Niwa, N-E-E-W-E-R, Niwa, uh, speed lights, but really basic flashes. Um, do the job and then something to hold your kind of bits of plastic and whatnot. Now I happen to have quite a nice collection of Wimberley plants. So, I've got, so you've seen the setup, I had two there. Um, but you don't need Wimberley plant, plants, although I'd recommend them um, hugely because they're fantastic. But um, if you're out in the field, you could use sticks to hold the plastic up uh, or maybe take some um, bamboo canes or something like that, that with your bulldog clips. Um, you don't need to spend a lot of money to do this type of photography and I think the uh, results 
uh, look fantastic. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm using a macro lens because I've got a dedicated macro lens. But again, you don't need to use a dedicated macro lens. Um, use your normal lens that you've got. Maybe uh, experiment with that. And uh, you know, if you could get some extension tubes, brilliant. I hope, I, I really like that type of photography. I really, really like it. I, I've photographed all sorts of things um, that way. I hope it's given you a good explanation. As I said, I'll put a link uh, below in the description to um, the MYN um, website so you can see what they, they're doing there. And there's also some other kind of tips. And uh, Neil Benvey's got a really good ebook about the whole process. But hopefully gives, that gives you a kind of a taster and an appetite. And uh, just suggest go out and try it. Um, got any questions? Put them in the comments below. Um, always great to have feedback and comments, so uh, please do that. Um, if you can, uh, be great for you to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, tell your friends and family about it because uh, uh, seem to be building a little bit of a community. So um, thanks very much for that. Thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.